Hi, welcome to my studio. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on how to work with denim. And so what I've done today is I've set out some uh, sample cuts of fabric uh, to do some practice work on. I have a couple of pair of finished blue jeans. I want to talk to you about the pattern that I'm using. So for these jeans that I've made here, I used closet cases, ginger, jeans or skinny jeans and this particular pattern is designed for a stretch denim so it's very important when you select a blue jean pattern that you pay attention to what fabric that it's asking for so a pattern designed for stretch denim needs a stretch denim and a pattern designed for a non-stretch fabric likewise um, so anyway i love her instructions i think she does a really good job um, i chose to make the longer rise uh, narrow legged bottom jeans. Um, I live in Alaska and wear lots of boots and have to tuck my jeans into boots a lot so I like a ankle fitting blue jean. So um, I'm going to set the pattern aside and I want to talk to you a little bit about the tools that I use with denim. So if we can look over here at the table. Um, I have a variety of tools here um, and I'll be referencing these uh, probably through the process. I have a really good pair of dressmaker shears. These are Kai. They're my favorite. I really like them. They're kind of lightweight, but they can handle really heavy fabrics beautifully without causing your fabric to walk when you're cutting. These are a less expensive version of the Kai. It's a bent handle shear. I like those too. Um, this is a, a, a little bodkin. Um, this is great for turning corners, and I use this or this end to kind of get my corners out really nice when I'm turning my waistband. This is a marking tool uh, made by Soline. I really like it. It has really fine pieces of chalk in it, and so if I'm needing to mark dots or maybe placement points for my pockets, I really like this tool. It's one of my favorites. Um, everybody needs a sewing gauge. It's a six inch ruler um, just for marking hems or whatever. So this is a, a must have in your sewing basket. Um, I find tweezers are very helpful and I'll demonstrate why. Um, you'll see why. These are grading scissors. I have a couple of pair here. Um, and quilters call them applique scissors. But these scissors allow you to get into uh, thick layers of seams without accidentally cutting your garment fabric and trim your seams down. So when you come to a section in your sewing instructions that say grade the seams, I want you to think of it as meaning gradually cut each seam down so they're not all the same thickness. And that's so that when you're done, this feels very flat instead of super thick here with one, two, three, four, five layers of fabric. Um, each is gradually cut at a different width and that's easily done with grading scissors. Um, Wonder Tape is um, a fabulous product. It's become one of my go-to products, especially when I teach sewing classes. A lot of people are very intimidated with zippers. So I, I, what I started doing is just having people use Wonder Tape. And so I will demonstrate how to use that with this particular project. It completely washes out. And not only that, it doesn't gum up your sewing machine needles when you're working. So um, these are thermal thimbles. They're fantastic for protecting your fingers when you're ironing um, really close, close to something. So anyway, um, I highly recommend them. They're really great to keep at your ironing board. You'll need a measuring tape as you pin your patterns out. It's critical, critically important that the grain lines of your fabric, the grain line of your uh, pattern pieces are perfectly parallel to the selvages of your fabric. And if you're a little bit new to sewing or self-taught and don't know what I'm talking about when I say a selvage, this is the selvage edge. So the grain of the fabric is typically stronger than the weft, the cross grain. And if if you're off even a quarter inch, your whole pant leg may twist on you. So it it's very important. And when a designer drafts a pattern, they draft the pattern with that in mind. So there's more stretch around your body than there is going up and down. It's how you prevent unnecessary saggy knees, saggy bottoms, etc. And you do need a little bit more stretch to go around your body, especially in a blue jean. So this is a garment uh, ruler. I love it. And sometimes you have to mark something on your 
um, garment and you can see through this and it's really thin, it's kind of pliable. So I actually own a couple of these. I just think they're a must have in your sewing room. I also um, keep a really good sharp seam ripper. Um, and just so you know, tools really matter. Um, the quality of the tool matters. So uh, a sharp one isn't near as frustrating as the little dime store uh, seam rippers that a lot of us start out with and you have to really fight your stitches with them. So a really good quality. This one is made for Bernina. It comes with Bernina machines. Um, so, and I sew on Bernina machines. So I have a bunch of these and I like them. I really like Clover brand seam rippers and they have a variety. Some of them are kind of ergonomically designed, but they're just really nice. Also pens. Um, and there, you, if you walk and tour my sewing room, you will notice that I have a variety of pins in each pen cushion. I usually don't have these pins. I just use these in bulletin boards or on my design wall. I do not like to use them actually in sewing because they're really heavy um, and they cause your fabric to kind of pleat a little bit. I just don't like them. So these pins, this pin is a product from Clover. I really like it. It's super sharp, really strong. I use them for pinning my pattern pieces down to my fabric. I do not like to use them to pin sewing except maybe a large patch pocket or something like that. Um, when I'm sewing, I like to use a silk pin. It's a smaller pin, it's a little bit shorter, but it's a little finer and it's sharper. When I'm sewing lightweight garments or quilts, I like to use these patchwork pins. They bend really easy, so you don't want to use them for pinning patterns down the fabric. So yes, it may seem excessive to have a lot of different pins, um, but you know, my husband has a lot of different drill bits for his drill and there is not a one size fits all. So pins are designed for different, you know, different things. So I always keep a variety of pins and I use them. So um, anyways, uh, another thing I want to talk to you about is denim. This particular denim is a stretch denim that we carry at Rain Tree Quilting. It's not a knit denim. There's a difference. So it's a woven fabric, has a little bit of lycra in it. And it really does stretch a little bit. So let me grab a piece, piece of it here. So cross the grain, it stretches, which is really nice. And to be honest with you, it, it really provides for a super comfortable fit. Um, I love, the, love this fabric. Um, the instructions give you the option to be using interfacing in the waistband. And um, it also gives you the option of using a different fabric in the waistband. So I'm going to show you the two finished pairs that I have here. And these are two different denims. Uh, they're both the same weight. They're about eight, eight and a half ounce uh, denim. And um, I used a K-facet fabric in this particular pair right here. And uh, instead of folding this under, I wanted to do something kind of artistic with it. I made a super lightweight um, bias trim and I just and I went ahead and used an interfacing however I want this waistband to kind of stretch with my eating habits to be honest with you so um, I don't want to put my uh, my interfacing in in grain I want to cut my interfacing at a 45 degree angle so here's the 45 degree angle of my woven fusible interfacing it will stretch it'll stretch with the blue jeans if I use it in grain, then there's no point in me making stretch blue jeans, you know. So you don't want to do that because it'll make it super um, constricted. So you can take your woven interfacing, cut it at a 45 degree angle, and that's how I interfaced that. I apply the interfacing to the lining fabric, which is a really colorful cave fabric. On this particular pair of blue jeans, I had a cotton and steel print that I loved. It's an older cotton and steel print. Just a really fun piece. And I did not interface this particular one because I'm just experimenting a lot. This one I folded under um, as opposed to this one. And my pockets are made with the same fabric, okay? This particular pair of blue jeans, my pockets are made with the uh, same fabric that I have in the waistband 
and I also used a little, and again, this is a very lightweight bias trim that I made, and it's just fun, you know? So this pair of blue jeans has a lot of embroidery on them, and I used an embroidery collection that was uh, developed by OESD for Bernina. Um, I think it's called Fashion Fleur, and it was red poppy, so I just changed the colors, and the way I changed the colors was that I looked at a lot of photographs of poppies, and I pulled out the blues that I thought would work, but making sure there was enough contrast so that the, the uh, leaves, stems, and flowers had some depth to them. And I also want to pay close attention to composition. So I wanted the uh, hip area on one leg to have this beautiful floral design going down towards the hem. And then on the opposite leg, and you can see that today I went for a walk on the trail and got them really dirty. But um, I just have one set of flowers there. On the back, I used an embroidery motif on each pocket. And so when I started the embroidery work on this, I, I had my pockets and I uh, put them in the hoop. And the way that I did this was is I used a large, it's, it's the large oval. It's not a huge oval. <laughs> It's a large oval. And I put my stabilizer in my hoop. And then I put my denim pocket using my flower pins. And I just pinned that in. And then, because I don't want to stretch my fabric, especially in a garment, it's really noticeable if you stretch your fabric too much when you apply embroidery work. And then I um, did my embroidery design. Then I sewed my pockets to each of my backs. And then I started the work on the front. So this embroidery design right here needed to be sewn on the front of the pocket. And if you look at this little sample I have right here, I cut some short samples because this is what I'm going to demonstrate the zippers on today. I did my embroidery here first. And I did the same thing. I started with my hoop. And I had my uh, stabilizer in it. And then I pinned this nice and flat, and then I put my embroidery design there. So I wanted the first design on here first, prior to sewing the facing for the pocket. And then I sewed my side seams together. And then I had a piece like this. So these jeans are designed, they're very contoured, they're designed to fit really nice. So I can't put, this hip area into a large hoop. So this design, using the same technique, putting my cutaway stabilizer in here, fit right there and I was able to pin the open pant leg into onto the stabilizer and then I did this design. And then for the rest of the leg, I was able to get my leg to lay really flat and add these other pieces in there to, to get this finished. The embroidery is a time-consuming pro uh, process, but it's really inspiring. So what I have is uh, a Bernina 700 embroidery only machine, and it's compatible with my 770 and my 790. I love to sew and I enjoy embroidery. So I, prefer to have my embroidery machine embroidering while I'm on my sewing machine getting the rest of the pant project ready. So as my flowers are embroidering on there, I'm over here getting um, the rest of the garment together. So thank you for joining me for this introductory video and um, just watch the rest of them and I'm going to focus on individual steps in the process. Thank you.